so today I'm kicking things off with an eyeshadow primer. I've popped a little of the e.l.f. eyeshadow primer onto my finger. Now I'm patting it around the eye area, anywhere that I'll be adding shadow. And this will just help the shadows to adhere a bit better to the eyes and last all day long. This is a clear primer, so I've taken my foundation across my eyelids first, and that acts as a base before I add the primer. So I'm going for a one brush smoky eye again today, and I'm using some drugstore products as per. I'm taking this wet and wild eyeshadow palette again, because a lot of you actually seem to have it. And I'm sweeping that matte cream shade all over the eye anywhere that I applied the primer, and this will just add another layer of coverage. It's setting the primer in place and covering up any discoloration or pigmentation that the foundation may have missed. Next then I'm taking this light shimmery shade and I'm using that on my fluffy blending brush to add a little sparkle to around the tear duct area. So I'm just wriggling the brush over that spot to apply the product. Now I'm going to take this matte mauve shade and I'm going to start working on the crease. So the crease area is literally that space above the eyelid. Some people's crease line will be more prominent than others. If you're unsure where to place the shadow, just feel for the orbital bone and then go from there. So that'll show you where to place the shadow and then we just want to blend the crease shade out towards the brow bone. So the idea is to fade that shade to nothing the closer to the brow bone that we get. So the brush again that I'm using today is the Coastal Sense blending brush. This is quite a large and fluffy blending brush and the reason I've chosen this is because it's great for adding a nice wash of colour into the crease of the eye that lacked as my transition shade but then I can adapt the brush and make it more dense for precision work. So I'm just adding a couple of layers of that mauve shade using large circular motions and windshield wiper motions to fade it out and I'm making sure to pull the shadow outwards on the edge of the eye to give a nice winged out effect to the shadows. I'm also then going to sweep that shadow down underneath the lash line too and loop it back up onto the crease area so that it all connects nicely together. I've tied a little elastic bobble around the brush to tightly pack the bristles together and now it works the same way as a pencil brush would. So I'm sweeping this down along the lash line and as you can see the pigmentation is much better than before. With the bristles gathered together like this it'll pack on much more product than if the bristles were splayed out. Then I'm taking the bobble off the brush now and I'm taking this kind of orangey red shade and I'm tapping it down on the outer third of the lid and then I'm sweeping the shadow across into the crease. So I'm going back and forth and sweeping very lightly to apply and then fade out the shadow when I have the bulk of the product off of my brush. Now I always make sure to concentrate on flicking the shadow outwards at an angle on that outer edge. And then I'm picking up a little more of that red eyeshadow on my brush now and I'm just repeating the process. So I'm tapping the brush down on the outer corner and then working the shadow up into the crease from there. And what I really like about these shadows is that not only are they fantastic quality but a lot of the time pinks and reds can tend to stay in the eyes and these don't so even if you didn't use a base you wouldn't need to worry about potential pink eye the next day. So now we're moving on to this more vibrant pink shade. I've dabbed my brush a couple of times in that shadow in the pan and once I've tapped off any excess off my brush, then I'm patting it down on the outer third of the lid and then I'm sweeping it into the crease once again. So there's very little effort required with blending these shadows. Like I said, very easy to blend, so perfect for beginners. And I'm just sweeping this around the eye until I'm happy with the blend and the intensity of the shadow. So I'm popping the bobble back on my brush again to squish those bristles together to make the brush appear nice and dense and then I'm sweeping that shadow down along the lower lash line too. And I'm making sure as always that it connects with the shadow on the lid, I don't want any gaps in that outer corner, you want the shadow to connect and flow. Next then I'm taking this warm brown from the palette and I'm going to start adding some depth. So at this point because I'm applying the shade to a smaller area I would switch to a smaller blending brush just so that I can be a bit more precise but I've added back on the bobble now to adapt the brush. So I've just applied the brown from the lash line up and around into the deepest part of the crease and now I'm sweeping that brown down along the lower lash line as well getting right in close to the lashes so that we can still see those ready tones that we applied earlier. We want to deepen the look up not cover up the work that we've done previously. The easiest way to amp up a look and add some sparkle is to use a liquid shadow and this is one of the Essence Metal Shock shadows and literally in a couple of swipes I have the most intense metallic sheen to the eyes. The applicator makes the shadow very easy to apply and being that it's a liquid you don't have to worry about fallout down the face so I'm just adding a couple of layers of this until I'm happy with the level of sparkle. So the bobble back on now, I'm just tilting my head back so that my crease is nice and exposed and I'm running the brown in the crease again to make sure I have a nice clean cut line where I've applied that metallic shade. 
Then I'm looking straight ahead and I'm wriggling my brush over where the metallic shadow and the matte lid shades meet just so that they fade nicely into one another. Switching palettes now, I'm taking this black eyeshadow from the Penny's Tropical Storm palette and I'm adding the black to really define the eyes. So with the bobble back on the brush now, quite far down on it, I'm lightly sweeping the shadow along the upper lash line and the outer portion of the eye and I'm adding it at an angle to add some lift to the eyes. I'm beginning with a very small amount of black because it's so easy to over apply it so little by little I'm building up that intensity so I just keep tapping down the black and sweeping it slightly to blend it as I go and I'm gradually making my way up towards the crease once I was happy then with the lid I moved on to the lower lash line and I just swept some of the black right into the lash line only taking it about a third of the way across the eye for liner then, I'm taking this black liner again from Penny's. It's only a couple of euro, it's pitch black and it lasts a lot longer than I thought it was going to. So I'd usually pick up some black now on an angled brush um, at this stage and I'd tap it onto the waterline. I'm doing exactly that now with the tip of the fluffy blending brush. It just worked exactly the same way. And the addition of the black here just stops the liner from wearing throughout the day. Particularly important step for me anyway because we've hit hay fever season now at the minute. So as you can see, I've added some lashes and now I'm using some of the Wet n Wild Mega Length Mascara to blend my own lashes in with the false ones and I'm also adding some down on the lower lash line to the lower lashes as well. And once you've got that in place, then that's it. So I hope you enjoyed the tutorial and found it helpful and easy to follow. If you did, please make sure to let me know by giving me a thumbs up and subscribing if you haven't and share a comment as well would be nice too. <laughs> so thanks very much for watching and I'll catch you soon.